How's it going team? More than ever before, life is busy. I'm 33, I've got friends to see, I've got things to do, I've got a business to run. So I feel as I'm stuck in a paradox that a lot of busy, but physically ambitious people are also stuck in. I want to maintain and build upon decent performance. I still want to improve my physique and do all the awesome stuff that I enjoy doing in the gym. But at the same time, I don't have either the time or the inclination to spend two to three hours in the gym every single day. I want to keep building upon the results that I've worked so hard for in the gym over the last 10 to 15 years but I want to get in and out of the gym in about 75 minutes to do so and not cock about for about two and a half hours a session like I did when I was 18. So the question is can I train for about 60 to 75 minutes per session three to four times a week not two hours per session six times a week and still progress in the way that I want to. As has become a little bit of a theme on this channel the answer is yes if you do it properly. And as for how do you do this? Well, as you might have guessed it, that's what we're gonna go into now. How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Jim Galvin and on this channel, we cover all things training, nutrition, biohacking, and ancestral living to help you guys work out what you need to do based on your individual biology to help improve your performance, your health, and your physique. And today I wanna to talk about how to save time in the gym and in your training routine without cutting out all the good bits. Three tips that are designed to disrupt your training as little as possible. That's the whole point, right? We don't want to have to change too much to get these results. The question is not, what should I cut out of my session so that I can do it in less time? It's how can I do the same session, or at least pretty much the same session, but get it done and dusted with still more minutes on the clock for the rest of the day. So let's get cracking, shall we? Number one, this is the one that is most radically different, but the one that I do have to say has made the biggest change in my training routine. And it is this, more so than ever before, even in the recreational bodybuilding world, even if your objective is pure muscle gains, most people are starting to see the benefits of including at least some metabolic activity in their training routine. Not enough, obviously, that's gonna ruin their muscular gains, but something to build a baseline of conditioning just to build upon the foundations of flipping health. Guys that aren't massively bothered about building an elite kind of engine are still starting to see the benefits of having a little bit of cardio in their weekly routine. Just to flush everything through so they feel a little bit more mobile, elicit a little bit of a metabolic effect so they feel and are a little bit leaner, but without having to compromise any of their gains. The amount of cardio that you need to do to compromise your muscular gains is actually a little bit higher than you think. Don't worry, you're safe, you can still take the stairs. And also just allow you to feel a little bit more able-bodied through life, especially for those of us over 30 years old there is no point being absolutely jacked and not worrying about health and being a little bit lean and able-bodied at the same time because you're just going to be flipping panting and sweating every time you get to the top of every single staircase. So what's the hack gym? Well the hack is this. I know that I need to do some kind of cardio but I also absolutely hate doing the same warm-up every day. I literally hate it so much and it is single-handedly the main barrier to entry for me emotionally committing to going to the gym and doing a good session. So what I've started doing is actually completing a mini wad with an escalating level of intensity as my warm-up. Lots of crazy words there, let me explain. Say as an example I was doing 12 calories on the ski erg, 12 air squats or body weight squats, 12 press ups, 12 hanging knee tucks and 12 like super light dumbbell thrusters. The first two sets I use as like a general warming phase and then sets three, four and five, I increase the pace a bit until it feels like a little bit of a Metcon workout. This means by the end of it, I'm ready for the lifting session. I'm mobilized because I'm working all these movements at full range and I've completed a warm up and a little bit of conditioning within the same time slot. And it's more enjoyable than doing the same flipping warm up every single day and cocking about for 15 minutes, doing a couple of stretches and walking around the gym floor. Hack one, get your warm up and your conditioning done within the same time slot with, as an example, five rounds of a couple of different exercises, increasing the pace as we go on. Done, let's move on to hack two. You would be surprised how quickly the central nervous system can adapt to recovering extremely quickly, allowing you to then lift relatively heavy again very quickly after your first lift. And for me, unless it's a specific strength exercise I really want to focus time, effort, energy and attention on, in which case I allow a full recovery of about three to four minutes so that I can truly attack each working set, I superset pretty much everything I do that is like four reps and up. Even as an example, a heavy set of around about five, which in this world is kind of the top end range of a strength set where it starts to border and kind of like phase into hypertrophy, I superset now. My body now knows that it needs to start recovering pretty bloody quickly and then I'm probably going to be 
moving into a mirror set within about 60 seconds of putting the barbell down. As an example, if I'm doing heavy shoulder press for a set of say six, I put the barbell down and do a heavy set of six pull-ups less than a minute after. Do that set, another 60 second break, and then back into the shoulder press. In this way, you can do six to eight total sets of work in less time, in way less time than it would have taken you to do shoulders on their own and then pull-ups on their own. There will be an adaptation phase where this feels quite alien and quite tiring. That's the beautiful thing about living in a human body, right? General adaptation syndrome means it will feel completely fine and normal within about 10 days. Same total work, nowhere near as much time taken to get it done. Can you do this for more than two exercises back to back? Maybe, maybe three in a big tricep. More than three, I'd probably say no, because the time taken between each working set of each exercise is gonna get longer and longer, and you might be pushed out of a rest kind of window, a recovery time window that is appropriate and allows for hypertrophy. Remember, the rest interval period, that rest window is one of the most important dictating factors of muscular hypertrophy and growth, of, of growth hormone release. And if you're doing this in the form of like a giant set of like four or five exercises working different muscle groups, you're realistically not gonna finish exercise one and then move on to exercise two, three, four, five, and then get back to exercise one in two to three minutes. So I definitely recommend taking advantage of supersets in this way to save time in the gym. But for me, two seems to be the magic number here. Three is kind of on the border and more than that, you lose the benefit of that time window that allows for a hypertrophic response. Hope that does make sense, guys. And if it doesn't, and there's lots of scientific words and you want a little bit more clarification, that's fine. Just drop any questions down in the comment section below and I'll get back to you ASAP Rocky. Okay, so to ladder up intensity in the warm up and get a mild conditioning response from this elevation was hack one and hack two was the superset with a special focus on mirror exercises so you get all of your working sets done in less time while still staying in that hypertrophic rest window between each set of each exercise. Moving on to number three, the third and final hack, which is I'm a big fan of power work. I think it is significantly underused and undertrained in the worlds of recreational bodybuilding, of functional fitness, of the military. And I actually did a video earlier in the year as to how we can train both strength and power, not only in the same kind of training cycle, but actually within the same session. And we can do this with a little known physiological principle called PAP stands for post-activation potentiation. And it's basically the idea that within a few minutes after performing a certain movement under a huge amount of load, you can perform the same movement extremely quickly. Lots of crazy scientific words again, but in terms of how to make that applicable, which is a big part of what we're doing here, imagine that you've just done a super heavy deadlift. Super heavy, as an example, in this situation might be 90% of your one rep max or up. You do this super heavy deadlift, and then for the next two minutes, you're primed to do the same movement, but unladen extremely quickly. So with my athletes, we love to do super heavy deadlifts and then within a couple of minutes after, test our broad jump. Because if you actually think about the movement mechanics, guys, it's pretty much exactly the same thing. Super explosive, a little bit of knee extension, massive amounts of hip extension. You just happen to do one with the bar and you happen to do one where you move your own body. Another example is if you do a super heavy bench press, again, about 90% of your one rep max are up. And then about two minutes after, do some super explosive press up variations. We're so incredibly primed after that heavy lift that our CNS, our central nervous system, hasn't quite adapted or woken up to the fact that we're not holding that heavy weight again. It thinks we're still under this huge load, so it executes that movement with incredible amounts of activation and intensity. Knowing this, we can do some awesome strength work and some wicked power work too, kind of superset it together to develop both maximal strength and awesome power output in the same time frame. Team, as much as I love talking to you, considering you're literally watching a video right now about how to save time in your day-to-day -day routine, it makes sense that we wrap it up there. Hack one, a conditioning effect from laddering up the intensity in a warm-up, warm-up and cardio done at the same time, boom. Hack two, supersetting all exercises over five reps to ensure the same work is done in less time and still remaining inside the hypertrophic window of rest interval. A variable that is super important for hypertrophy and growth hormone release as we discussed earlier. Hack three, taking advantage of the PAP principle to develop both maximal strength and power output in as little time as possible. Legends, thank you for your time. If you did enjoy this video, please do give it a thumbs up. It does massively help me and help the channel grow. And if you did enjoy today's video and you want to learn a little bit more about how to balance both strength and hypertrophy to be both strong and big and how to do that perfectly in the most effective, efficient and graceful way possible, then just click this link right here. And for the rest of you guys, stay strong, stay Stay healthy, stay awesome, peace out, and I'll see you in the next one.